Hello everyone, today is a special video because one of my community members in Discord asked how to harden a Docker image, for example, with Cassandra and how to work with Docker and make a small Docker tutorial, basically. And this is what we do today. First of all, let's work with Cassandra. Cassandra is a NoSQL database. This is not a Cassandra video, so... Uh, we leave it at that. There is an official image called Cassandra and latest is basically the latest version and we we can leverage this image. So first thing you want to do normally is to download the image which is easily done by docker pool Cassandra. It will automatically use default tag latest and I already have it downloaded that's why it went through right away. Normally you would have to download. I think the image is 100, 200 megabyte. When we have the image, you can do something like docker run a Cassandra latest, which will run the Cassandra docker image just fine. The problem with that is that you don't have any port forwarding to your Cassandra image. So you can't basically do anything with that. Cassandra is booting up and you can't connect to it. Let's start docker for desktop. The reason why I do that in docker for desktop because sometimes it happens that when I exit out of the shell the docker image is still running and then you have under container apps a lot of images running and you're wondering why your PC is getting slower. We stop the container here and we delete it. Deleting is normally faster than then stopping and then we are out of the container and the container has just stopped. So what we can do is um, we can do with dash p and port numbers map port numbers to your local host. For example local port 9042 is going through container port 9042 and we do that for 7000 as well. So when we do that again with, with our Cassandra, then we will be able to not only boot up Cassandra, but also connect to the database. Moving from Docker to Kubernetes is just configuring a Kubernetes deployment. So we could run this Docker image in Kubernetes. So the community member on my Discord, link is in the description. He has the issue that he wants to secure the Cassandra image. So he wants to give, in best case scenario, a password and the password is the default user password in Cassandra. The problem is what we will see now. That I have a downloaded a tool, Table Plus. It's just to connect to the Cassandra database. I won't do anything special. So if you have your own code and everything, it works the same. And I have three configurations saved. One is with no password. So it's connecting to localhost with no password default configuration. Then I have one with the default password. Default password is username Cassandra, password Cassandra. And I have one with my, with my test password and we can always test our image with, with those connections, what, what works and what not. So first of all, we need to wait for Cassandra to boot. I will cut, cut this out in the video so it will be booting up for you. So startup is completed and we can do connect with no password. And we see here at the top connection is fine. We don't have any issues. We can do control K, which is tool specific and go, for example, check out system mouse and check out the roles. And we will see Cassandra can log in and the super user with the salted hash. So this is worst case scenario. Your, your database is online and there's no password or username needed. Everybody can connect to that. And that's where the issue started because the default Cassandra image doesn't provide anything for you to set the password or something like that. 
So it's kind of tricky. There are many ways to do this. We need to modify files on the image. Version one, which is possible, is create our own image. And as you can see in the background, I have a Docker file. So I pick this, this option. What I like about this option is you tend to have your own version control anyway. So even if you host a Cassandra in, in your cluster, usually you don't do Cassandra latest and every time a public image updates, you update your machine. Usually you don't want to do that because there might be some breaking changes and whatnot. And you have upgrade migration paths. With your own image, you have full control over it. So it's way easier for you to uh, control your version upgrading. The other option to make this possible is to mount files. For example, what I can do, I have this Cassandra file here, etc Cassandra Cassandra.yaml, which is basically the Cassandra configuration. Um, let me increase the font size for you so this should be better readable so we have this etc cassandra cassandra.yaml file and we want to modify that what we can do we can mount an external file from the host system into that file and replace that file that way that's also possible in kubernetes one special thing you have to keep in mind Mounting in Docker and mounting in Kubernetes work differently. For example, when I have a folder with a test.txt and I mount in Docker over the same folder, a folder with a test2.txt, then both files are available in Docker. That's because of Docker has a layered file system. And if, if a file on a topper layer doesn't exist, it reads through to the lower layers. And in the lower layer, there's the test.txt file. In Kubernetes, mounting doesn't work that way. In Kubernetes, mounting is like the Unix or Linux command mount, which overrides the full content of the file system. So when I do the same mounting approach, the test.txt file isn't available anymore. So you have to keep that in mind if you want to use the mounting approach. This is definitely not an unsolvable problem, but I thought it would be easier to create my own image. And it works on most of all cases. So now you're wondering, there, there is a default etc Cassandra Cassandra.yaml. And how do you get this file? There are, there are multiple ways to do that. Uh, for the Cassandra image, we are quite lucky because the Cassandra image is open source. It's uh, github.com docker-library slash Cassandra. And you could just download the files that you need. This might not always be the case. And if that's not the case, then we need to have a, another way to get those information. The simplest way is running the image. And then there's a command for that, which actually exists in Docker and in Kubernetes. The same works with Kubernetes pods and containers. It's just uh, instead of Docker CP, it's cube control CP, but the, the mindset behind that is the same. So let's first of all go to the right folder. And let's make a new folder here, test. And we have the image running. I didn't give a name, so the name is generated randomly. Let's copy that. And then I can do docker cp, the name of the container double dot the file location and my local file cassandra.yaml and now we have cassandra.yaml basically copied from from the running container which which is the what I did for 
the Cassandra dot YAML and the Docker entry point shell script because this shell script is what is starting the image and the cassandra.yaml is the cassandra configuration with those two files in hand i can modify the image quite easily because i can modify those two things and they work just fine what you also can do when the container is running here's the cli button and if you press that it will execute docker exec in interactive then the the container name basically as a hash form and it will execute bin slash sh in there which is not the best bash so maybe you want to do docker exec t and i think i can use this name also slash bin slash bash might be better then i have a bash in there so yet, let's use the bash because the bash is a little bit better in my opinion than sh. So the, the color configuration of PowerShell is not great for that. So let's copy that over and use it here. So we have our, let me increase the font again. So we have we are connected to the container basically pretty much like a SSH connection and we can do everything we want here. We can go to etc Cassandra and check out what is in the container and discover what is in there. This is not needed in in this case but there might be more complex cases where you want to do that that's why i showed it so let's kill this container and when you have the container running you will see that i use a tool which is not installed on the container so let's let's redo how wh what i did I copied over the Cassandra YAML and the, the entry, that's, that's the first thing I did when, when I was, was building this Docker file. So I copied over the Cassandra YAML with the command we just executed and I made a Docker file to copy this back to the, to the Docker container. And then I have this Cassandra YAML and I changed one thing which is under authentication and I changed it to password authenticator. Default was all authenticator. That was the case when I copied the file from the container and I modified that to password authenticator. That's all I changed in the Cassandra YAML. Then I copied this back to the image. What I can do now is build this image and run my version of the image, which is quite simple to do. Uh, we have docker build dash t then we need a name cassandra i named this test pv as a as a tag because cassandra latest is the the official image i don't want to change that and dot slash the dot slash is the context of the docker build and i'm in the wrong folder i'm in the test folder so let's remove the cassandra let's remove the test folder so in this context here i can do what i just did so docker build dash t cassandra test pv dot slash and it will use this docker file because it's in the current folder and use the context so that this cassandra yaml is in the same folder as the docker file because the context is the is the same as the docker file so it created this image and now when i run our command again and instead of just cassandra latest we do cassandra test pv simple as that and it will run the image that we just created 
The only difference in the image is this small file that we copied over and we can obviously test that. So we can again go to a CMD, do docker exec interactive eager point care, which is the name of our docker container here, and slash bin slash bash. And then we can do cd etc cassandra, so we go to the cassandra folder, and we do cut cassandra.yaml, and do grab our 10 tk top. And then we see it's password authenticator now. So our file is copied over and our container should start and have username and password. The problem here is username and password are default username and password, which is not too much of an issue because we could connect to the machine and change the username and password in place. But that, this is not what we want to do. We want to automate everything as much as we can. So it started. We can connect with, again, to localhost with no password. Then we get the error, password must not be null, which is true. Then we can do default password, which is username Cassandra and password Cassandra. And this works fine. But a default username and password is pretty much as secure as no username and password. But normally what you could do is you could, for example, execute a Cassandra command, which it looks like that. Oh, sorry. Cassandra command which looks like that alter user Cassandra with password and then we can say test PV and execute it but that that is obviously not what we want to do there is another thing that we want to do we we want to docker copy the docker entry point sh because this is what our docker container is running so we what I did was the same with the Cassandra YAML, I docker cp the file and have it locally here, modified it and copy it back. So now comes the tricky part. This is the, the whole script that runs docker. It's a lot of configuration stuff, which is not interesting. But at the end, there is exec $add, which is basically starting the Cassandra instance and while the instance is starting i want to do something what i can do in bash scripting is i can do barracks and an end the end means that this command is run in the background so while this exec is executed my commands which are between the barracks are executed parallel and i have a small script while not csql sh with default username and password executes the scrape cluster then it writes it to def null so i don't get all clutter in my standard input if it gives an error then i will echo wait for cassandra cluster and sleep for six seconds so this loop basically waits till this exec has started a Cassandra cluster. If, if this loop ever finishes, then the Cassandra is booted up and connectable with default username and password. Then I issue out some information, nothing too fancy. I want to exec, execute change PV C, CQL. Basically the CQL we just implemented alter user Cassandra with password and a given password. This environment substring replaces environment variables in your files or in your text. So this tool needs to be installed. So we need to do apt-get. We need to update because this line is executed by the default image. So we need to apt-get-update and install get-text-base. 
this basically installs the, the tool we want to use. And then we do remove uh, recursive force varlib apt list. The reason we do that is to make the Docker image smaller. It's basically clutter files which we don't leverage anyway, which is the uh, the, the catalog for apt-get in Ubuntu. So you could leave this file out, which makes the image a little bit bigger, but it's always good habit to clean up those images. So when when we do it like that, then we, we are able to execute the end substring. What it does, it replaces every dollar, for example, Cassandra, password with with the environment variable in this path in this this name so i have this template file which i have written which does alter user cassandra with password and then dollar cassandra password so it replaces the environment variable cassandra password and replaces this string with it so i feed in my cql template file into and substring that's that's how how this lower lower than works so and substring lower than basically feeds this file into and substring let's run run the container and the the version Let's create a container version where we didn't modify the, the entry point. So we default start, but we have installed end substring. So we install end substring and let's run this container. I have made a small script here, which builds and runs the container with our test configuration. So let's use the script, it's faster. So the container is built. We have installed uh, get text base, so we can use our tool. And Cassandra is available via default username password. So we have an old one. Let's remove that, and we have this one. So there should be. I want to do the better command so docker exec it jolly kava then bash so there should be and subs should be available as a command and it is so we can export uh, cassandra password equals test pv and we can now do, let's create a folder, which call, we call test, go in there and let's create a file. So I show test Cassandra password into test.txt tem template.txt. So when we do env sub st and do test.template.txt, then you will see it replaces the, if you cut the file, it replaces the environment variable with the environment variable content. This is how this tool works and substring. Important, when we do and substring and again write the result into a file, test.txt, then this obviously works exactly like we want to. So the test.txt includes a template. What I was having an issue because uh, I didn't know it, when you write it in the same file again, this doesn't work. So when I cut test.template.txt now, the file is empty, which I found quite interesting. But So you have to read the template file and write it to a non-template file. 
it can't read this command can't read and write to the same file this is why we have change pv template cql and write it to change pv cql so we have this this one line of cql that we want to execute and our docker container is now able to leverage the tool to replace that so we copy the cql file in a known directory for example etc cassandra and have changed pv template cql copied over then we run chmod 777 um, because permissions in linux so everyone can read write and do everything with the file because we don't care it's just a template file there's no password in there nothing it's just this this line basically so and then we copy over our docker entry point of edge which we modified so we have explained this line now so we wait till the docker container is available if this docker container is available then we write to change pv.cql the the template file but we replace with nth substring this environment variable so this change pv file just needs to get executed which is cqlsh username password to this point still is default username and password and we replace it with with our command with test pv and then we execute the cassandra container so you see under build and run i give an environment variable cassandra uh, underscore password test pv and we can test it out now let me just make sure i save the files and when i run the let me first kill this container when i run the new container our username should be still cassandra and our password should be test pv you could alter the cql file with any cql you want to execute and leverage environment variables so you could create user and deactivate default cassandra user and everything you want to do the reason why environment variables are really good for that is first of all kubernetes supports environment variables very good you can read environment variables from files from kubernetes secrets from config maps from basically everything which makes it really handy to use another advantage of environment variables and why they are so common to use for configuration like that is they work on every environment environment variables exist in mac they exist in linux and they exist in windows that's why why it's always a common ground for configuration and files uh, for sorry configuration in images and everything to use environment variables so our container is still booting we should see here we see our wait for Cassandra cluster, wait for Cassandra cluster. And we should see in all this clutter here, it's still wait for Cassandra cluster. Here still wait for Cassandra cluster. And here Cassandra cluster ready, change password. And it gives some warning because our CQ, our Cassandra CQL script doesn't have a home Cassandra dot Cassandra folder for history. We don't care about that. So now we should not be able to connect with default username password. That's true. We should be able to connect with test PV, and this is this is also true. So this is how how that works now we have our our cassandra with a different password than the default password and basically harden the cluster this way this is everything for today 
I wish you all a great weekend. Very much thank you to my patron Julian and also thank you to to the person in my community asking for me to create a video like that. It's really awesome to create a video where I know that people are interested in the topic. Bye.